Good morning, world. This is Dr. Rico Shaw, the Root Canal, specialist to the stars, the grace life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this magnificent Monday, man. I pray that you had a great weekend. I pray that you had a happy Mother's Day. And those of you guys that are mothers, man, I, I bless you. I thank you for everything that you do. Those who maybe not are mothers physically, but have helped raise the a, a young man, a young lady. Thank you for that. Thank you for the for the for the mentors who were who were mothers. I, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today without the moms. And I tip my hat to all the moms around the world. Thank you for your grace, and thank you for your mercy, and thank you for your honesty, and thank you just for your love, man. I appreciate it, and I'm pretty sure everybody else around the world appreciate it as well. And today. I want to talk to you guys about something else that I appreciate, something called scandalous grace, scandalous grace. You know, the word scandal, it means a perceived offense of morality or the law. It's a perceived offense of morality or uh, or of the law. And the word grace is God's unmerited favor found in the finished work of Jesus. I'm going to repeat that. The Bible definition of grace is God's unmerited favor found in the finished work of Jesus. So when you put that together, man, Jesus was scandalous. <laughs> Jesus was scandalous and not in a bad way. Jesus was scandalous in a good way because he gave us grace that we did not deserve. See, every blessing that you have now because of Jesus finished work is because of him. It's because of his grace. It's because of his goodness. And sometimes what happens is we get so caught up in the law or we get so caught up in performance, what I have to do in order for God to bless me. And, you know, it, it reminds me, if you go back and read scripture, man, you go back and look at this Zacchaeus, who was a scandal of attacks. Um, um, he was a, he, he was a, 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 a twisted tax guy that overcharged people of their taxes. But one day Jesus was walking around and Zacchaeus was in a tree and Zacchaeus was hiding from Jesus and he wanted to see him. It's just like, you know, when you're doing something wrong, man, you know what you're doing is wrong, but there's something in you that's attracted to Jesus. There's something inside of you that's attracted to God's goodness. So Zacchaeus was in the tree and we saw Jesus come by. Jesus looked at him and wanted to spend time in his house. Hold on, wait a minute. You mean to tell me Jesus, who is a Jew? Jesus, the son of God, wanted to spend time in a notorious tax collector's home that was overcharging people? What? See, that's what Jesus does. See, this is not religion I'm talking about. I'm talking about relationship. This may not be something you may hear in a church because church wants you to do all this religious heroics, jump through hoops and all that in order for God to bless you. And we have been taught wrong. You know, I'm just being honest. You have been taught wrong if you think that's how God works. No, God is a good, good father. And Jesus is full of grace. His grace is so much that you don't even know if you deserve it or not. You know, when he starts blessing you, when you are still in a pit, he's like, man, I don't even deserve this. That's the scandal of grace. The Bible says it's the grace of God. It's the love of God that brings a man to repentance or turn him around or to change his mindset. So let me get back to this story about Zacchaeus. So when Zacchaeus had a revelation of who Jesus was and Jesus didn't judge him because of his sins. Ooh, that's the spirit right there. Holy Spirit, speak to somebody around the world. Jesus does not judge you by your sins. <laughs> He came to take your sins away. So if Jesus don't judge you by your sins, God doesn't either. Because the Bible said, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Jesus says that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father who sent me. So when Zacchaeus allowed Jesus, who is full of grace and truth, to come into his home, guess what Zacchaeus said? He said, Lord, if I've offended anybody, if I've ripped anybody off, I will give them four times what I stole from them. Not one time, not two times, four times. And that's what the grace of God does. That's what the love of God does. When you invite Jesus, the man that has scandalous grace, the man that was scandalous grace in your house, in your life, in your mind, in your marriage, in your finance, in your business, he's going to turn it around. 
he's going to turn it around because he is full of grace and truth, even if you don't deserve it. My goodness. This is a word that I'm sharing, man. If it ain't for nobody else, it's for me. Because I have issues that I still with and I need God's grace and mercy become new for me every morning. And so do you. If you're a human being, you got stuff in your life, too, that you can't fix. And I believe God in his infinite wisdom, his infinite knowledge, purposely put things in our lives that we can't fix. I call them pits. P-I-T-S. Pits. Purposeful pits. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak on purposeful pits. Okay. Okay. All right. So do you remember the prodigal son that spent all his money on rides his living and prostitutes? He wanted his inheritance before his father died. So the father said, okay, I'm going to give you your inheritance. So he took this and went to a far distant land and just partied all day and night. You know, I'm talking about he made it rain. I'm talking about he slept with all the prostitutes. He did all that kind of stuff until he was broke. And then he had to get a real job. And the job he had was feeding pigs in a pit. And he was doing this. And then all of a sudden he was hungry and he looked, he was like, man, even the pies that the pigs are eating looks good. Now here it is. Now this was a guy that was in the palace. His daddy was like our God, like Jesus. But yet he traded all that stuff in just for a moment of pleasure. Holy Spirit, speak on this. Okay. Be careful about what you trade in for a moment of pleasure because a moment of pleasure can bring you a lifetime of pain. Say it, Holy Spirit, again. Okay. The whole, a moment of pleasure can bring you a lifetime of pain. So when this guy was in the pit, he came to himself. He had a, a metanoia moment. He had a moment where he had to repent and he thought about the goodness of his father. And he said, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to come up with this story and apologize to my father because the hired hands, the hired servants even ate better than this. They were even treated better than this. So he had a story concocted in his head and he turned. And when he turned, the father turned. Holy Spirit speak. Okay. When he turned, not physically, inwardly, when he saw, man, my father is good. My father loves me. When he had that moment, that's repentance. Repentance is basically having a mind shift of how good God is and God is good all the time. So when that happened, the father, the Bible says the father turned towards him. And in that day, Jews didn't run. <laughs> the Bible says the father picked up his I don't call it a dress, picked up his, his, his coat, so to speak, and ran towards the sun. And in that culture, they did not run. <laughs> they didn't. In fact, it was against the law to run. That's why grace is so scandalous. Jesus did all this stuff, not necessarily against the law. He fulfilled the law. You get what I'm saying? He fulfilled the law. That's what he did. And that's what he was doing. And so the father who could have punished the son, this prodigal son, this wayward son, he said, no, give him the best robe. Put the ring on his finger and let's celebrate. Because he remembered scandalous grace. Oh, boy. See, the father, our father has so much, man. We can't exhaust his love. We can't exhaust his goodness. We can't exhaust his grace. The only thing he wants us to do that he can't do for us is turn our hearts toward him. Turn our hearts towards him. That's all Jesus even talked about. When Jesus healed people, man, Jesus, see, the Jews thought that Jesus was only going to take care of them and to take them away from Roman rule so they can rule and reign on this earth as kings and queens, as Jews. No, man, Jesus had a different type of kingdom in mind. He had a kingdom that would defy the kingdom of the world. The Bible says, and he says, in order to be the greatest, you have to serve one another. The kind of kingdom that he came was an upside down kingdom. He said, man, you love your enemies and you do good to those who, 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 who despitefully use you. Man, that's amazing grace, like the songs. That's scandalous grace. 
Even Jesus was healing people like the centurion's, you know, um, um, child that he wasn't even a Jew. <laughs> Jesus was doing things that was countercultural. He was in the world. He dealt with people of the world. And guess what else he did? He loved the people of the world because he was filled with grace and truth, scandalous grace. So what do you need in your life today? Are you dealing with something like an addiction, drugs, alcohol, pornography, you know, cheating on your taxes, cheating on your spouse? I don't know. Um, health issues that really is your fault. You know, you're, you're not taking care of yourself in the way you know you should. You weigh overweight or you weigh underweight. Um, you, you, are, you, you are looking towards everybody else as your source. And maybe your spouse have left you. Maybe your husband has walked out on you. Or maybe your wife gave you a certificate of divorce and you don't know what to do. I just want to encourage you today, beloved, all the people around the world. If you give your heart to Jesus, man. He is going to give you scandalous grace. And the word scandalous, like I said before, man, that's that's a perceived offense of morality or against the law. Or you get something that realistically you don't deserve. And that's grace. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to give us life and life more abundantly, even in the midst of our sins, even in the midst of our shortcomings. And like I said before, I believe God put pits in our lives so that we can develop a relationship with him so that we could come to him with boldness. In fact, in fact the Bible says we as believers, we as children of God, we don't come begging God for things. No, we come with boldness. But how are you going to come with boldness if you don't have a relationship? See, God wants us to be intimate with him. He wants us to spend time with him because once you do that, you have a relationship with him and therefore you can come to him with boldness, not weakness, man. That's right. You could come to the, the Bible says the throne room of grace and receive any and everything that you need. So today, whatever you're needing right now, I just want to encourage you that God has it. Do it. Do it afraid. If it's something you got to let go, man, let go of it. Because when you let go, guess what? You let God. You let God in your situation. You let God in your pit. Now, who wouldn't want, out of anybody else in the world, who would not want God to be in the pit with them, to be in the valley with him? The Bible says Jesus is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Today, I want to encourage you, man, that he is the lily in your valley. Whatever you're facing right now, whatever health situation, marital situation, some of you guys are facing issues with your children. Some of you guys are facing issues with your home and with your business and you don't know how you're going to get the finances for it. Invite Jesus there. He's the lily in your valley. He loves you and he wants to serve you with goodness and kindness and grace. He don't want you to jump through all these religious hoops like fasting and you know, tithing and all these other kind of things that we were, in my opinion, mistaught. He just want to serve you. That's right. Jesus said he didn't come to be served. He came to what? He came to serve. And we don't hear this enough in the church. Jesus wants to serve you with scandalous grace. That's right. The Bible says that. Will you let him serve you today? Will you let him serve you? Grace, goodness, peace, joy, fulfillment in the Holy Spirit, because that's his desire. Love y'all, man. Thank y'all for listening. And I pray that this message helps you in whatever you're dealing with today, because whatever you're going through today, man, it's going to be better on the other side. So just do it. Do it afraid. Keep your head up. Keep speaking positive things over your life. And I guarantee you, God will step through and come through for you strong. And remember, whatever you lost, God is going to give it back to you. Maybe not in quantity, but quality. I'm going to repeat that. Whatever you lost, God will give it back to you. Maybe not in quantity, but quality. Love y'all, man. This is Dr. Rico Short. Just want to share what's on my heart today. 
about scandalous grace, man. Love y'all. If you got something from this message, man, please share. Somebody else around the world needs to hear this message. If I need to hear this message myself, I promise you somebody else needs to hear this message. All right. Share it. Um, you can also go to my YouTube page, subscribe to my YouTube page, man. I got plenty of these messages like this. Um, hundreds of them there and you can be encouraged daily. And if you want to get something tangible, something in your hand, go out and check out my books. I got two books out there. One is called getting to the root of your problem, 365 days of inspirational thinking. And the second one, my latest one is called in the eye of a storm, 45 days of turbulence and peace that will help you with any issues that you're dealing with in life. And both are available at Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, iTunes bookstore, and just about everywhere where books are sold if you ask for that. So love y'all, man. Have a wonderful, uh, magnificent Monday and a blessed week. Grace life. Peace.